So, you're a filmmaker who's also a fan of The Last of Us, and you'd like to recreate this shot right here. Well, it is a good thing that you're here, because today we're learning how to turn this into this. All within After Effects, starting right now. So with the drop of the new show, Last of Us, on HBO, I thought it'd be fun to go through the series, but also the games, and try to recreate different scenes, or shots, or just visual effects that I saw. If you haven't played the game, don't worry, I won't spoil the context of the shot we're looking at today. So let's jump into After Effects and create this. The first thing we will need is our footage to work with. For this shot, I found that there are four different elements that are needed. First, our main shot of the action happening. Next, two shots with the subject's hand showing us their ring finger and then their middle finger. And lastly, a shot of the background with the same focal length of the previous shots. So in After Effects, let's start out with our main footage in a new comp and begin this edit by rotoscoping out the tape. To do that, let's double click on our layer or right mouse click on it and select Open, Open Layer and grab our Roto Brush tool and highlight the areas where there's tape. And then play through the clip for the brush to work automatically. So while the machine is working right there, I would like to quickly address that when it comes to making this effect, you don't have to use tape. The point of it is to just create something that is bright covering our fingers so the program can easily read it. Now, a great solution to this and the best solution is using green paint or green makeup and you see this on Hollywood film sets all the time. But for this example, I guess you could say this is just the ultra low budget filming techniques that's also on budget. <laughs> Oh, we're done. Once the road is done, make sure that you check invert foreground, turn on the motion blur, and then hit freeze. Now let's go ahead and duplicate our main footage, delete the rotor brush effect from it, and name it tracked shot. On this layer, let's apply Mocha AE, and with the playback resolution at full, select the Mocha logo found in the effects control panel to open up the software. Here we are going to get three individual tracks from our footage. One of the pinky, one of the ring finger, and one of the middle finger. Let's start with the pinky by grabbing our X-spline tool and draw just a simple square around the tape here, naming the layer pinky. You may have been wondering why there was a piece of tape on the finger, thinking that I have made a grave mistake. <laughs> no. Now, we don't need to worry about any of the settings here, so let's go ahead and track through, and once that's done, we can check our track by selecting the planar grid and framing up the planar surface on the end where the finger is visible. If we play through, we can see that it's a beautiful track, so let's go ahead and turn off that layer and keep going. And now we're going to do the same steps with the ring and middle finger, with a little bit more finagling because those fingers are covered up. So for our ring finger, we're going to draw out our shape where it best fits. Now, with our shape having good placement, let's go ahead and track through, this time needing to be cautious as do not have the pinky cross our spline, so every now and then adjust your shape to stay out of the pinky's way. Now don't worry, moving your spline like this will not affect your track at all. The software is not reading the position of your spline, but it's reading the pixels within the shape that you've created. So again, once you're done tracking through, give it a double check and then do the same thing for the middle finger. And then once all that's done, make sure your layers are named properly, save and exit. Back in After Effects, we can turn off the track shot visibility, and now let's go ahead and create three new nulls, naming each one by each finger that we tracked. Now with the track shot layer selected, we can go to the effects control panel to the tracking data dropdown menu and begin adding the data we got from Mocha to our nulls. To do this, select create track data, and let's first select the pinky finger, hit OK, and then change export option to transform, select the pinky null for the layer to export to, and then hit apply. And so for the ring and middle finger, you'll follow the exact same steps. So now that we have all our tracking data connected to our nulls, let's begin to build the effect. Starting out with our pinky, we want to first duplicate the main footage layer, freeze frame it, and rename it to whatever you prefer. I also prefer to color code things, so any elements we add to this pinky, we'll label it pink. So we're going to go ahead and grab this bit of knuckle here, and we'll use this to add a little more shape to our pinky. Let's flip it vertically by going to transform, flip vertical, and place it on the end here. To soften up this back edge, we can add another mask here, set it to subtract, and feather it out. Now let's go ahead and add our bloody stub overlay. Now this is just an asset that I got from a simple Google search, but you can also find it in the description below. So let's go ahead and add this to the end here, applying Luma Tree Color to it, using the basic correction tools to color correct it. Also, you can add some Gaussian Blur to soften it out a bit. Now with our pen tool, let's make sure no layers are selected and begin drawing out our bruising. Dark reds and purples tend to work best with the blending mode set to overlay or soft light with a good amount of Gaussian Blur to it as well. If you find that the blur effect isn't working, simply uncheck repeat edge pixels. Now for this detail, you'll also want to make multiple layers of these shapes with different opacities, colors, and blur amounts for it to look natural. 
Once you have the look you like, select everything that has been added to the pinky and parent it to the pinky track null, and enabling motion blur for it to all come to life. If you need to make minor adjustments to the position, you can just add keyframes to the individual layers themselves. Lastly, go ahead and select all the pinky layers and pre-compose. For the ring finger, it is the exact same steps to achieve this effect, except obviously we're not going to be grabbing more skin from the pinky to reconstruct it, but we'll be grabbing it from the ring finger plate that we got on set. So once we have that done, let's move on to our middle finger. Just like the other two, we will use a plate we got of the middle finger and mask out the part that we need. Position it in a good place, again color correcting it, and then pairing it to the middle finger null. So when we play through, you can see the issue we're having is that the finger is bending at the knuckle, but the image that we've tracked in is not. So to fix that, we're going to use the puppet tool. With our middle finger plate layer selected, go up to the toolbar and select our puppet tool. When using this, I always like to have our player on the first frame to help with the keyframe organization, but you can do whatever you want, I guess. Now, let's make four anchor points and move through the shot, adjusting these anchor points where needed. Also, a little tip, if you hit U on the keyboard, you can see all your puppet tool keyframes so you won't lose track of them. Once that is done, I notice two small issues that stand out. First, there is a slight gap showing between the ring finger and the middle finger at times, which we can easily fix by duplicating the middle finger plate, removing the puppet tool effect from it, and adjusting the mask to just be one small one. Now take the layer, put it underneath the main footage layer, and color correct the layer accordingly. Here we can see that it's a little too bright, so I can quickly fix that. The second issue I see is that we have this small bit of skin spiking out of the side here. To fix this, let's select our main footage layer and keyframe a small mask set to subtract around the area for the entire shot. Once we're done with that, the last issue to tackle are the black spots in our image, which aren't color black shapes or whatever, but they're actual holes in the clip. Let's first select everything that we've done and pre-compose. Now with this layer, we are going to rotoscope the full hand. Once the rotoscoping is complete, remember to hit freeze and then duplicate the layer, deleting the roto brush effect. Now on this layer, draw a mask around the hand, set it to subtract and feather it out. Lastly, let's take the background plate that we shot on set, drop it in and adjust the position to match our shot and now now we have our effect. Now, if you really wanted your shot to look as close as possible to our reference, but you don't live anywhere near a hayfield such as me, you can always rotoscope the entire arm and the body, replace the background with some stock footage, and that will give you that authentic result that we saw at the beginning. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. If you learned anything, or if you just enjoyed your time, make sure that you like and subscribe. If you have any other ideas of Last of Us type scenes or visual effects that you would like me to try to tackle, make sure that you comment them below. I would love to check them out. I hope you have a great day. God bless and peace.